Welcome to STEM Media Live. I'm your host, Dr. Nehemiah Mabry. This is the place where we chat with some of the most inspirational and creative people in the STEM community. I'm excited, y'all. Why am I excited? You already know because today is no exception. Today's guests are a group of phenomenal, promising young black engineering students and professionals. And I'll tell you one thing, they got something in common. As a hint, it's the color blue. But first, what we're gonna do right now is go ahead and go into our first segment. And for those who've been with us, you know what it is. It's called, did y'all hear that? <music> NFTs. Have y'all heard of NFTs? Now, if you have been into cryptocurrency, then you may have heard of NFTs. NFTs, for those who have not heard of it, is something that is a unique unit of data. Now, I'm trying to put that in layman's terms because the actual term for NFTs is non-fungible tokens. Now, what that is, is a unique data that is entered on a public ledger. Now, you all have heard of ledgers, right? Ledgers are those things that people have, really back in the day, local grocery shops and, and stores would have before things got all techie, when they would just keep a record of all the transactions that would take place. If you had to pay someone or someone had to pay, they would always put it in order on this ledger. Well, now that things are techie, things are digital, a blockchain is what we call pretty much a public digital ledger that's made available to people all the way across the world, right? And so this blockchain now has the ability to make things authentic in the form of cryptocurrency, or in digital files known as non-fungible tokens. So one of the things that is very popular when it comes to this, one of the oldest represent uh, uh, representations or examples of this is known as CryptoKitties. CryptoKitties is actually a blockchain game. One of the first attempts to use the blockchain for like leisure and, and recreation. Well, what they do in this particular game is that it allows people to like purchase, collect, breed, and like sell virtual cats today we have two very popular games known as uh crypto punks and crypto kitties which allow people to purchase different variations of each character throughout the game it's not so much the games that i want you to focus on it's the ability to now leverage this brand uh i wouldn't say brand new but this hype newly hyped technology to be able to authenticate unique pieces of art that's right NFTs is a way for entertainment companies, artists, and many people to provide certificates of ownership, whether it be a piece of fo a photo, whether it be videos, whether it be audios, or other types of digital files, baseball card tradings, NBA card trainings, again, musicians or entertainment content, right? It's now being able to uh, uh, intersect with this world of NFTs. And I just want to make you aware of it if you haven't heard of it, because this may be an opportunity for you. I know there's a lot of creative people watching this. And so I definitely want you all to look into this. And now you know what you're going to do about it. Now, on to our guest of the evening. As I said before, we have a panel. They're a group of, again, young professionals who all study engineering at Duke University. So now I'm going to bring them on one by one and introduce you to them all at this time, starting with the person that helped pull this together. She is a senior class of 2021 civil engineering student with a focus on structures and a certificate in architectural engineering. She has the hometown of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Y'all do me a favor and join me in welcoming Miss Jamie Williams. What up, Jamie? Hey, my name is Jamie Williams and I'm excited to be here. Awesome, awesome. We're excited to have you. Next up, we have another senior, class of 2021. She is studying biomedical engineering with minors in chemistry and biology. Her hometown is Raleigh, North Carolina, where yours true is now located. And she is going to pursue a master's in physiology and med school to become a neurologist. Y'all, please do me a favor and welcome Miss Jordan Scott. What up, Jordan? Hi, thanks for having me. Awesome. Thanks for joining us here on STEM Media Live. Next up, we got a young man who is a third senior, class of 2021, studying mechanical engineering. He is from the South, hometown Orangeburg, South Carolina, and he is looking to gain industry experience and looking to do something in his future that he enjoys 
for a living. Y'all do me a favor and welcome right now, Mr. Brandon Hill. Hey, what's up, man? What's up, man? I'm happy to be here. Excited to get started. Yeah, man. Happy to have you. Happy to have you. Uh, next up, we have a Duke alumnus, class of 2019. She was previously studying environmental engineering, earned her BS, and is currently working on earning a master's in civil engineering at Villanova University. She has the hometown of Baltimore, Maryland. Please do me a favor and welcome Danielle Holtz. What hey. up, Danielle? Hey, everybody. Happy to be here. Can't wait to get into the discussion. Yes, yes, yes. That we will do. We got one more guest. Uh, I believe the youngest person on the panel today. He is an electrical engineering major. He comes from the great state of Georgia, and he has career aspirations of going into software slash web development. Please join me, everyone. Let's welcome our sophomore, Robert Cranston. What up, Robert? What's good, y'all? I'm Rob. Uh, glad to be here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Y'all, that's right. This is the panel for Stimmy Live. The first time we had this many guests, y'all. And y'all going to be breaking in, uh, breaking down the firsthand experience of what it's like to survive engineering, but not just engineering, as a black student at Duke University. But before we get into all that, we know we break the ice by going uh, to our guests and hearing a random fun fact about them. So let's go ahead and start that. Something unrelated to engineering before we get into the nitty gritty. Jamie, why don't you kick us off with that icebreaker? Okay, I would say my random fact. It's not random to my friends and to my family, but I guess to, you know, STEM media. Um, my entire childhood for like 10 years, I was uh, a competitive gymnast, so. A competitive gymnast? Yes. Awesome. Wow, I didn't know that. I had no idea. See? That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely new information. What about you, Jordan? Um, so this past year, it's been my first year living alone. I've really gotten into cooking. So this has been my new like quarantine, <laughs> learning what to do, how to adult task. Got you, got you. What's your go-to meal right now? Right now, um, oh, what's my go-to meal? I feel like rice is an easy thing to do. <laughs> Make however you want, fried rice, curry uh, rice, whatever. Well, yo, you can't go wrong with a nice, uh, nice pot of rice or fried rice, however you want to go with it. So that's cool, that's cool. What about you, Robert? Random fun fact about yourself outside of your, of course, electrical engineering pursuits. Um, I used to be really big on running, um, track, cross country, uh, summer league running. I was all throughout high school uh, trying to get back into it. Got you. So um, distance is like your forte? 5Ks, what's, what's the, miles. How many? What'd you say? Five Ks, the, the one Five Ks, mile. miles, that's your thing. Wow, much respect to you, much respect to you. Definitely hope you can get back into that in the future. Um, Danielle, random fun fact. My fun fact is that I'm actually a twin. I have a fraternal twin sister, um, but she's into art and I'm like STEM, so we're like opposite <laughs> sides. Got you, got you, got you. Cool, well, shout out to her. What's her name? Uh, her name is Jessica. Hey, Jessica. What up, Jessica? <laughs> shout out to you, Jessica um yeah my man brandon what's yours yeah man i gotta say my fun fact is that i'm half jamaican i gotta give a shout out to robert man i see the uh i see the flag in the background hey <laughs> what's the noise what's the noise like <laughs> <laughs> well, i'm gonna give it to you please i don't know it bro i ain't trying to <laughs> trying to mess it up so shout out to robert you got jamaican background too yeah both of my parents born and raised cool 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 that's what's up that's what's up, so that's we what's got up man Definitely got some Jamaican representation here on STEM Media Live. Appreciate all y'all for coming on. Um, so let's just get things started by asking the question, how did you get into Duke? Duke has a reputation of being a pretty good school across the board, one of the higher ranked schools. And so I'm interested to know, like, tell us a little bit about your high school experience. What did you, you know, were you involved in extracurricular activities? Were you pretty high ranked in your class? Like, give us a little bit of that that story leading up to your interest at Duke University. Whoever wants to take it. I'll go first. Oh, Jamie. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the answer to your question is yes. Um, I was involved in a lot in high school. So I was actually class president. Mm -hmm. um, I think when I graduated, I was ranked like number four in my graduating class. Um, what else did I do? I took a bunch of APs. Um, 
I did some sports. I did softball for like a year. Um, I was on student government. Yeah, I did a lot. Um, and how I like ended up at Duke is um, I was a part of this program called the Elijah Cummings Youth Program. So my senator, he had this program basically where it worked to bridge the gap between the black communities in Baltimore and the Jewish communities in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. um, and a part, as a part of that program, we also got some college advising. Um, so when I was looking at school, I was I was kind of looking at mid level schools mm -hmm. um, and like local schools because that's just what most of the kids from my school like. That's the type of schools that they went to. Um, and the lady who was in charge of counseling, her name is Miss Dina. She's actually here in Philly right now. Um, she recommended that I just you know push myself and apply to some higher caliber schools. So I applied to Duke and I got in. Um, and yeah, the rest is history. So the that's my story. History. That's how I ended up here. I love it. I love it. What about you, uh, Jamie? Um, I would say mine is a bit similar to Danielle's. I was very involved my entire high school, four years, I guess. I went to like a college preparatory school, so it was kind of known, but it was also in Louisiana, so it was very known for like everyone going to local universities, and I was really adamant about not staying in state. And so all the universities I applied to weren't in Louisiana, actually. Okay. And I would say, I don't really know. Oh, yeah. I got, like, in touch with Duke, I guess. Not really from anyone else is that I, like, I did a lot of research when I was in high school. So I think I Googled, like, the top engineering universities. And Duke was one of them. And so I did more research at Duke. And then it was, I was like, it's in the South. You know, the colors are blue. Right. <laughs> like, I'm going to apply. And then I went to BSAI and then I was like, okay, I like Duke. I like Duke. And so that kind of pushed me to go to Duke. And so I guess involvement, I was like, I was a straight A student my entire four years. I took APs my entire four years. Mm -hmm. I was involved in like extracurriculars and sports. Like I was team captains and stuff. Um, yeah, it was a lot of hard work, but yeah. But you got in, but you got in. Jordan, you uh, you from Raleigh, and you know, Duke is in Durham, Raleigh, Durham. So in a way, you kind of stay local. So I'm wondering what went into your decision. Did you was that always your plan to kind of stay close, or was it just end up being the best out of the places you apply? Um, it wound up being the best of the places I applied and places I got into. Um Duke was kind of on my radar since I was younger. Um, I did the Duke tip program kind of starting in elementary school, but, you know, of course, getting more involved with the high school summer programs that are like mm -hmm. three week long courses. So I think I was already kind of on Duke's radar. Duke was already on my radar. <laughs> um, it came down between like Duke and UNC. And I really just wanted to be in the BME program. UNC, they're not an engineering school. So you'd have to go through NC State to do it essentially. So I right. want to just, you know, take all my classes on one campus. Got you. Got you. I'm wondering if uh, any of the fellas are willing to say if Duke was your first choice or not. Like, was it like always like, yo, Duke is number one or, you know, to be honest, did you have kind of other schools you had your eye on? Robert or Brandon? Yeah, no, I'll say something. Um, I'll say Duke was definitely my first choice coming out. I, mean, I had like a, diff a little different route than a lot of people. I uh, I played football, um, and, and fortunately earned a, earned a scholarship. But I ha actually had a few role models in high school that I really looked up to, uh, that went to Duke before me, um, and they're actually going to med school or actually just graduated med school. Um, or in our in their residency right now. So shouts out to uh, Danielle. I know you're going to med school right now. So yeah, yeah man. So that yeah, it was always really good people, kind of leading the way. Yeah. Ooh, what about you, Robert? Um, yeah, so I'm a engineering student from Metro Atlanta. So it's like Georgia Tech is most like most students are like looking at there to go. That's right. And I was like Georgia Tech all through um, like my senior year of high school. I was like, I'm going to Tech. Like I have Georgia Tech basketball shorts. Like that was my school. And then um, senior year, I switched to like healthcare, and I wanted to do like BME. And I looked uh -huh. at as applied to like the top BME programs. I think it was like Duke Tech and um, Hopkins, I think. Okay. And then I went to, I like visited all three and then Duke's BSAI was like the only one where like the students were like actually having fun while at the same time it being like a top school, like compared to the other two, a lot of the other kids seemed a lot more stressed. I was like, that might not be the vibe. So like Duke just seemed like the, the place where I'd have the best time at. 
that's why that's why I ended gotcha. up here. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. I wanted to any of you all go to like I mean predominantly black schools, predominantly white schools, and then regardless of which boat you fall in, what was like the biggest difference from just the general makeup of the school when you got on campus in Durham, North Carolina? I went to a PWI. Um, I think coming into Duke, also being a PWI, it was a little bit weird of a transition because, you know, where I was at, everyone came from the same background. So even if we didn't have race in common, we all went to the same grocery store. We all went mm -hmm. to the same um, roller skating rink for fun. Like there was a familiarity there, but coming into a lot of different backgrounds, a lot of people who didn't have exposure to any different cultures than what they had been around their whole life. That That's was a really big difference and something I had to adjust to. So I went to all black elementary school, middle school, high school, uh, maybe like 1% white population. Mm -hmm. So it was a big adjustment coming to Duke. Um, just like population wise, culture wise, um, it was a big shift. Like having classes where it's like, you're the only black person there. Like that was like my writing class last semester. Um, so it was just like real unfamiliar, like being the only one instead of just everyone being like you. Um, so yeah, it was a big switch up that way. Yeah, yeah. Brandon, you, you played football in high school, right? I think you just said that. And then you came to Duke um, and you played football at Duke freshman year right away? Right. Yeah, what, what was the difference in, I guess, the student athlete like? Cause I, you know, in high school, I played sports in high school, didn't play in college. In high school, like I promise you, it, it, it didn't really feel that hard, but I hear a lot about how difficult it can be as a student athlete sometimes on the college level. What would you say is the biggest difference that you experienced being a student athlete on the high school level than college level? Uh, definitely just the game. Like um, in high school, there's a lot more enjoyment. And I, I, I'd say, you know, it's a lot more fun. You kind of just go out there running around with your friends and everything. In college, like the coaches, everybody treats it much more like a job. So you know, at the end of the day, if you want to have fun, you got to get your job done. If you're not getting your job done, you know, I don't know, like, you got to pick up your, your stuff at the end of the day. So, yeah, so I think that's the biggest difference, man. So it's definitely kind of trying to get that balance between school and kind of making sure you're doing that because you don't want to give too much to football, take away from your academic side as well. So it's yeah. just finding that right balance, yeah. Man, you brought up something because you talked about, you know, and that's what we're going to get into, just the academic life at, at, life at Duke, right? Because – engineering is not the easiest major out there would y'all agree like it's not like it's it's not like you know if you just go into class having fun waiting to last minute even though we try that sometimes um but go ahead and give me though like on a scale of one to ten um how difficult was it for you and then when was that time and i would love to hear all y'all when was that time when you first got that gut check and was like whoa like like this is not this is this is going to be a dog fight like give me that experience Let's go. Let's go with uh, Danielle first. <laughs> okay, um, one to ten. It was. It was. It was a ten. It was a cool ten. A cool ten. <laughs> Not even going with you. Um, and when did I know? Freshman year, my first math class. Freshman fall, um, I was taking multi-variable calculus. So some other schools call it like Calc C or Calc three. But yeah, y'all, I was in that class and I did not know what was going on and. What had me shook was a lot of other people in the class that came from high schools um, where they went to private high schools. So they previously had taken multi in high school. Now, I went to a public school in Baltimore County. Like we were not teaching multivariable calculus. I had Calc BC, um, like the AP class, but that was it. So, yeah, I was in that class. I didn't know what was going on. Um, I'm pretty sure I passed with a C minus at that class. Thank God, because if I got a D, like, you know, D at uh, Duke is like failing. So I think if you get two Ds, then you might have to like stay longer or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, it was like right out the gate. I was just fumbling. You got that yeah. gut check. I hear you. I hear you. What about you, Jordan? What was that that like? I mean, that class that, that smacked you. <laughs> it's literally the same class. Really? <laughs> the wow. First test. I remember I got it back. It was our first midterm. I had never seen a score that looked like that before. Like, I didn't know people actually could score that low 
I thought maybe just like give me points or something would help. But yeah, I wound up withdrawing actually by freshman fall taking multivariate but calculus. And it just took me a minute, you know, math was my one of my best subjects, one of my favorite subjects and going from being on top of the class all the time to now, I don't know if I'm gonna pass this. That was a huge gut check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert, you're you're pretty, I guess you 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 just finished it up your sophomore year, right? This is this is your finish your sophomore year. So I guess you could potentially still have some hurdles, um, unexpected hurdles coming your way. But so far, what has been like the welcome to college moment for you? The same thing. Just, just multi, took multi last fall. That was rough. That was terrible. Um that would be easier it was because it was online and they were like, um, like we have to make it more conceptual, and I was like, "Oh, this is rough." It it hit hard. Multi. I feel like most Pratt students are like kids that coming from high school. They're like, "Oh, math was easy," or like they were good at math. Like do math, it hits different, bro. I know, um, right? And it, the professors, yo, like the professors. I remember when I got to college. Like when I first heard a professor say, "I'm a professor, not a teacher." Like it's not my job to teach you. Like that's what I had a college professor like. I'm just gonna profess what you need to know, and then you go teach yourself, right? And I was like, "Whoa, like, hold on." High school, I, I thought they were we were teachers. Like, what's going on, Jamie? Did you have any experience where you know we took part of similar classes where you were like, "This is this this hit different." I think I'm gonna have to piggyback off of what everybody else said and go with multi because actually my freshman year, like coming in, everyone was like in the Duke and SB group me chat. They were like, "Don't take multi your first semester." They was like, "Don't do that." And so I actually took Calc BC, like AP Calc BC, my senior year. So I retook Calc 2 my freshman fall. And then freshman spring, I took multi. And I was failing. I failed every test. I failed every single midterm, the first, the second, and the third one. And so the only reason I passed that class is because, like, I was sitting in office hours, like, for an entire week before the final. And so, yeah, multi is brutal. And at Duke, it makes it even worse, bro. Man, let me guess, Brandon. Multi. <laughs> I mean, I really do. It really is multi. That's the crazy thing. Man, I mean, wow. I think of that. It really is multi. The class is really awful. I got to say. Yeah. But we all got through it, so. Y'all did. Y'all did. What, did y'all have, like, study groups and stuff where y'all used to link? You had a group chat, but y'all ever do, like, the study group, link up, late night, let's get it done? See, I think my thing was, it was, so I took it my freshman fall, so I didn't have friends yet. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like when I first started at Duke, I was kind of, I was very much into the um, the imposter syndrome. So I was kind of just like, oh, everybody's smarter than me. Everybody knows what's going on. I'm just like, you know, inferior mentally or something. So I didn't ask anybody for help. Um, and I hadn't gotten on to office hours yet because I thought only like, I thought that it was, um, your fault if you didn't understand the information so why would i go to office hours now i i got over that like by sophomore year thankfully um but yeah i didn't ask anybody for help and i i definitely wish i did if you were a person like like danielle that didn't ask for help and you were just like you try to you know just thug it out by yourself raise your hand real quick raise your hand if you were just like i'm gonna go ahead strong into it was that everybody oh man everybody was the independent tip for real, for real, Jordan. Why? Why was that? What was your thing? Was it similar? I mean, I think kind of like it's been said before. People who go into Duke Engineering, like you, do well in a lot of these classes. Mm -hmm. So it's one just such a shock to your system to be doing so poorly. But because you've been doing fine before, you've never had to rely on other people to get you where you needed to go. You've been doing it by yourself and been doing just fine. Going from that to leaning on other people was definitely a big step. Yeah, yeah. Did you find the experience a little different um, in terms of help Brandon as a student athlete? Or was it kind of like you still had to just do just as much as they had to do, even with the practice schedule and the getting up early? Or did you find any type of ways to, like, I don't know, try to help yourself get ahead? No, yeah. One thing I will say is like having the like all of the structure, like with, with the, all the practices and the meetings, kind of forced us to create our own schedules as far as work was concerned. So 
you know, I was kind of on a different schedule than a lot of the other engineers were, but I had to get my work done at certain times every single, uh, the same day, every day throughout the week. So it was really rigorous, like the same schedule, but it worked out and helped kind of keep everything flowing, everything consistent uh, throughout the year. So Yeah, yeah, I got you. So it almost was like you couldn't afford to procrastinate because it's like, yo, this is my window to get it done. If I don't get it done now, then. Yeah, you're stuck. Um... Yeah. All right, yo. So on uh how many I want to hear everybody's answer to this really quick. Let's go around. On average, how many hours of sleep do you think you've gotten? Um, you know, thinking about your time at Duke at night. Jamie, what about you? Okay, so freshman year was a different story. Like the first two years was different. So I always say, okay, I was actually one of the people that slept more. Like I would take naps and stuff, or I would, you know, sleep in class. So <laughs> I would say maybe five hours like freshman and sophomore year, but this year I'm definitely getting my solid eight. Wait, you said, what did you say freshman sophomore? You said nine? Five. Five, five, five. okay, okay, cool. But now you had the, you had a solid eight. Okay, yeah. let's go around. Robert, how, how many hours a night? Um, I feel like I'm probably at like five, five and a half, some, maybe like four and a half. Okay. It, it depends, probably like five or six is it five for, for like all freshman and sophomore year. Jordan? Yeah, I'd agree with Jamie. Freshman, sophomore year, probably five. Now, something happened when I got into junior year. I cannot pull all nighters anymore. It's not in me. So oh, I no. it's crazy. Brandon, what about you, man? What was sleep looking like? No, I would say definitely around five or six, too, um, for sure. But I was like, Jamie, I take a lot of naps throughout the day. So I can <laughs> balance it out somewhere. Got you. Got you. It, it's not always continuous, but like, Cumulatively, you find you find that sleep time. Yeah, you get it in definitely. Get it in, get it in. Dan, uh, Danielle, as you now transition to your master's program, um, do you feel like you're sleeping more or less? And and have you found any hacks to make sure you get the rest you need? Um, for sure, more. Um, you sleeping more. So in now. undergrad, it was. Okay, yes, okay. like definitely, one hundred percent. All right. <laughs> yeah, and undergrad, it gets better, like, everyone. It gets year, better. Yeah, um, sophomore year undergrad, I was probably getting like four hours a night. Mm -hmm. Like honestly, five hours a night was like a great night. Now, yeah, I get my full like seven eight hours every single night. Like, period. <laughs> yeah, yeah, got you, got you. Well, I guess transition again a little bit to like how that you know rigorous academic experience intersect also with your your cultural background as a black student. Um, were there ever times where you felt like, whoa, like on this campus, I may have went to a PWI, I may have went to a black school, but on this campus, I am definitely a minority and I can feel it because of this. Anybody want to speak on that? Like when, when did you begin to kind of notice, not begin, but were there any moments where you're like, yo, like I'm definitely a black student on this campus? Um, I guess again, coming from PWI, I think it took me a long time to notice that the reason why certain things weren't going the way that they should was because I was a black student. Mm -hmm. So what we talked before about, you know, being able to reach out to other people, it was hard to find people who looked like me in my classes. And that's one of the easiest ways to find your study groups. So I'd see, I'd be working on like a physics homework set downstairs in like the lounge in the physics building. Mm -hmm. And there'd be like a group of white guys who were working on it and I just wouldn't feel comfortable working with them. And then I would notice certain times when I was doing group work where I would say the answer that was right and get totally shut down by mm -hmm. this group of white and Asian students. And then be like, that's weird. And then I talked to my friends who had similar experiences as black students. And mm -hmm. it's like, oh, this is a theme. This isn't just a coincidence. Yeah. You said something very important, like, you know, find the study groups because I know, and as I, I'm sure y'all can relate, like that's huge. That's huge when it comes to getting your work done. You know, that time where you're learning it outside the classroom and really just like feeling comfortable enough to say what you do know or what you don't know um, without like having to battle through like preconceived notions that people may have because you are a black student. And so I, I'm just wondering, Jamie, do you ever feel like, or have you ever felt like 
all right, like I want to be able to like just relax and put my guard down, but because I'm in this setting right now, I gotta kind of like watch my back a little bit. Yeah, I can say I've definitely felt that way. And so I guess that's why I kind of lean towards Duke Nesby a lot. Like yeah. just being surrounded by like black engineering students. I know I like the freshmen I came in with, I studied with them a lot. And then like sophomore year, I actually, I met Brandon at multi office hours. So that's, we started studying math together like after that. Yeah. And then I actually, Danielle used to help me with a lot of like civil work because she was the only like black civil student that was like ahead of us. So yeah, I lean towards like the black engineering students for help. Got you, got you. You remember that, uh, Brandon? You remember that uh, meeting Jamie? It was that kind of like a finally somebody that you know I can at least be myself a little bit more around as I as we try to like, figure this stuff out. No, definitely, yeah. I think we all kind of share that same feeling, you know, feeling kind of ostracized at times, you know. But it's good to connect with others. Yeah, well, those were hard times. Yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. Daniel, I know you. So as an alumnus in 2019, you know, graduating in 2019. You were on campus when some pretty, like, you know, I guess national news broke as it relates to our community. You know what I mean? Um, and all of you, really. I mean, just even recently, we, you know, even last year, obviously, a lot has gone on. What was it like when, you know, there was a, uh, you know, a Maude Aubrey, you know, more recently, a, a George Floyd situation? And, you know, there's so many situations where we as a community is like, yo, this, this is not right. Um, but at the same time, you realize that you're, you're going to school at a place where everybody not, may not necessarily, um, see it the same way or feel it the same way. What, what was that like for you or how has that been for you, Danielle? Yeah. Um, so I had like two different experiences. Um, first one is, I think it was the summer of 2019. So right before I got to Duke was, um, when Freddie Gray ended up dying in Baltimore. So like where mm -hmm. I was from and they had like the riots in Baltimore. Um, so when I got to Duke during orientation week, a lot of people were using that as like, um, you know, just like quick things to talk about when they would meet you like, oh, where you're from, Baltimore. Oh, like I heard about the riots. And that just really angered me because it was kind of like they were minimizing the situation and minimizing where I was from to like that one fact. Um, and they weren't really worried about, you know, or concerned about what I actually thought about it. They just wanted to bring it up as something to talk about really quick. Um, and then as far as when things would happen on the national news, I felt like my experience in engineering was very different from other students who weren't in engineering because right. the students in the liberal arts classes, they were given space in their classes to talk about what was happening. Mm -hmm. Whereas with us, it was kind of like, okay, physics is physics no matter what. So like, we're not going to talk about it. We're not going to give any space about it. Um, so that was kind of hard. Like I'm sitting in class, supposed to be learning, you know, all these differential equations and whatnot. When I'm sitting here thinking about what I saw in the news last night, and I haven't had the chance to talk about it with anybody. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it wasn't easy, but you know, you do what you got to do. I know exactly what you mean. Like, so I was in school back when um, when Trayvon Martin happened, right? And I just remember, like, I wanted to scream one time because I went to school the next day and like everybody was business as usual. Like I'm seeing this stuff all over the news and it's like really infuriating me. I'm like, how in the world can this boy get killed? And then of course, like people start, you know what you, we've seen the play before, right? Uh, we start, it's happening even right now, right? With George Floyd where um, people on the other side try to paint them as a criminal and as bad of a light as possible. Um, minimizing the fact that look they're not even alive right now to even say they started the story let alone um refute you know or present themselves as they really are but now they're just subject to just just tearing down this image and it did a couple of things for me right like obviously it was just very frustrating and really hard as you said Daniel, to just get through the work when this is it's like really bearing on my psyche um but but in addition to that it kind of get got me thinking about how people might perceive me and how I need to present myself. And, you know, there's sort of was a tension in between, all right, cool. I don't, and I want to hear all, you, you know, whoever wants to speak on this, you know, I don't need to live my life trying to impress, you know, white people or people not, not like me, but at the same time, I understand that I may be 
a very limited peer into my community before certain people who don't have as many experiences with black people. So I'm just really curious how much um, thought goes into I'm gonna be me versus like, I also do represent a larger community in this environment for you all as you pursue engineering, again, a, a, a career path that isn't the easiest. I would say I could take this one, but for me, I definitely had like to, I balanced the two. Um, for me in like a classroom setting, specific like at Duke or in any classroom, um, I wouldn't say I'm like antisocial, but I come to class to like learn, do my work and then leave. And so I felt sometimes I was like pressured to like have small talk or like have conversations with my non-black counterparts so mm -hmm. they would know that I'm not like this angry black woman, you know? So I felt like I was forced to be an extrovert, which wasn't difficult, but it was like, I guess it was just like an extra pain when really all I wanted to do was get my work done. Yeah. I'm interested, what, what do you think, Robert, in, in terms of your experience so far? You know, you come from Atlanta where it's like, so much black excellence, right? Um, and there's definitely black excellence in Durham, don't get me wrong. Um, but maybe sometimes on campus, you can look around and say, you know, maybe I need to hold it down for the home team. Does that happen for you? Um, yeah, to an extent. Um, I feel like there's this thing where like it's pretty recognized on campus. Like if you wanna, be around like only black people like you could make that happen especially for me for like i've been in um like i'm in lockdown for longer than i've been um like in actual classes gotcha. so like i had only one full semester where i'm actually like in class <laughs> and then the rest is like in my dorms like this whole past school year like sophomore year like i'm yeah. only seeing like my close friends who happen to all be black so there's not really much of that exchange between um like non-black people on campus. But for freshman year, um, there is kind of that like pressure when you're in class. Like if you're like that one black kid in class and then like if you answer a question wrong in front of the class, like you wanna be yeah. like, oh, like he got in here because of affirmative action or something like that. Yeah. Um, there's that pressure that's on you um, at certain points, but you just kind of like work through it really. Um, do the best you can. Yeah, do what you got to do. I think what was said earlier uh, by Danielle. Um, Brandon, do you feel like uh, you, an added layer gets put on top of that as an athlete um, when you talk about like the way people may perceive you? Uh, most definitely. Uh, I would say though, and kind of like how I perceived it, it was like a layer was kind of taken away. You know, I feel like I was got really it. put in the center of you know, a very large, predominantly black team. So, you know, I always had those people around me. So it was really easy to, you know, see, like just live within that show. Um, but no, I mean, definitely being doing engineering was was different, kind of put me out. Uh, you know, I share a lot of the same experiences that, experiences that Jamie talked about mm -hmm. um, in class and everything. So uh, it was a little, I got a little dose, dose of both, I guess. Being within a black community kind of on campus, but also being outside of one, yeah. Got you, got you. What what made you choose your particular discipline in engineering? I'm just sure it's like mechanical versus civil or industrial or me, anything. Yeah. Honestly, it was really the, the most general. I okay. didn't really know exactly what, what I wanted to do and I knew there was a lot of paths I could open up with that, so. Got you. Mm -hmm. Man, on, on that note, Jordan, you, you are, you know, I noticed earlier that you are a person that, you know, you have plans to go into med school right? Like not necessarily stay in the engineering world. Was that always your plan? Uh, was it something that you kind of discovered as you matriculated through Duke? Yeah, it was kind of always the plan. Um, I wanted to be a doctor since high school. I did a program actually with Georgetown and part of the program, they had us be introduced to like different paths outside of just being a doctor. Yeah. And one of the people there is talking about BME. And both of my parents are engineers. Basically, up until my senior year of high school, I refused to even give merit to the idea that I would be an engineer. Um, <laughs> just because it was always something that was kind of, oh, your parents are engineers. You must really want to be a little prodigy. I was like, no, I do not yeah. want to be my parents. But it was really what I loved. 
I asked for robots for Christmas. Um, I love putting together puzzles. Math and science were my favorite subjects. So yeah. it wound up being kind of the perfect combination of the subjects that I was good at and the passion that I had for my future career. I got you. I got you. Well, cool. And what what type of engineering does your parents do, by the way? Um, my mom's chemical with a graduate degree in environmental. And then my mom or my dad is electrical. Got you. Cool, 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 cool. Anybody else want to speak on that? Why, why did they choose? Why did you choose the path that you chose? Um, and did you change at any point? Danielle, Jamie, Robert? Yeah, so I actually sort of kind of changed. Um, so for my high school and middle school, I went to magnet schools and I was doing environmental science. Um, and one of my teachers recommended that I try environmental engineering when I get to college, just because it's very similar to environmental science, but I'd be using more math. So I was like, you know, OK, I'll give it a try. Um, so I did environmental at Duke and I did an internship um and it was in water and wastewater which is what a lot of environmental engineers end up doing i didn't really like that so i decided i want to do water resources right um so now i'm in grad school and my degree is technically in civil engineering because that's right. just the way that water resources usually goes so it's kind of still the same but it's like a little bit different um but yeah that's been my journey gotcha 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 all right, y'all, check this out. We got a segment on here called um, School Me. We're going to talk about some specific things. If y'all give me some specific insight to places at Duke University that I am not aware of, perhaps you are. Here we go. School Me. School Me. School Me. School Me. School Me. All right, so School Me. This is how School Me works. I'm going to show a picture on the screen of some place on campus. And I want y'all to give me some firsthand experience of what goes down, um, maybe something specific about what you experience as you see it on the screen. Here we go. First up, does this look familiar to anybody? Yes, yeah, 20s. This is the only place where engineers eat because it's the only place that's located. This is the only eatery place besides vending machines, if there are vending machines near like the engineering campus. And it's always packed. Really? What kind of food they got there, um, uh, Jordan? They have a lot of sandwiches, a lot of like hot sandwiches, and then they have like a rotating menu. So they'll have like two different dishes that you can come in and get hot. It'd be like, you know, pasta or, you know, something. It's usually good. <laughs> got you. Does it make you bring, uh, does it bring back memories, Danielle? Like, do you kind of like have a little nostalgia when you see that sign? Do you yeah. Miss it? Of course. Um, I would be in 20s for two of my three meals a day. I would go there and get breakfast before my 830 class. And then I would be right back there for lunch. Um, and the ladies that worked in there, they were just so nice. They um, they kind of they had like an all black staff. And, you know, just going there every day, you get real familiar with the people who work there. Um, so, yeah. yeah, 20s brings back really good memories. I love it. I love it. I love it. Cool. Cool. Any any particular memory you got, Brandon? 20s any any 20s memory uh nothing too specific uh i definitely spent a lot of time there right before classes trying to grab a quick bite to eat um yeah it's really the only places the engineers eat that's definitely true wow 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 okay all right cool i'm gonna have to uh sink on campus real quick and order something you got any recommendations robert i know you haven't been there as much as the others um being only second year but if i go there what do i need to get I've only gone for breakfast, actually. Um, okay. Yeah, eight thirty. I had it three times a week. Um, so every day I'd be in there getting my what was it, bacon, just bacon, egg, and cheese croissant, um, with a little apple juice on the side. It, there it, you go. Um, that sounds good, man. The croissant and the apple juice on the side as you make your way to class. I love it. I love it. All right, next, next thing, next thing. Where is this? Does this spot look familiar? at all so that's cmos um a lot of engineers will study on the second and third floors of that building um okay. it's really nice inside like they have a sculpture hanging and it's like super quiet um and nobody knows about it except for the engineers so it's like a prime study location jamie jamie you were telling me about the third floor right like what is it about the third floor why do people go to the third floor 
Honestly, I have no idea. I studied there one time and it, like Danielle said, it is super quiet. Like it's intimidating how quiet it is. Word, word. Is that your spot, Jordan, or do you got another favorite spot on campus? <laughs> we were talking about this earlier today. I actually have, there's a building like right across the street from this um, called Tier. Uh -huh. There's like a basement area that has a bunch of couches. And as much as nobody is in CMOS, nobody, not even the engineers, will be on the bottom floor of Tier. So that's where I would go. <laughs> So you're like the quiet spots for real. There's not a lot of ruckus. Because let's face it, sometimes on college campuses, there are study places, but it's really just social lounges for the most part, right? What would be that social lounge spot on campus? I feel like the Mary Lou Center, like the main floor was like, I would go there to study, but I was so naive to think I would get studying done. Because right when you walk in, it's just like a bucket load of conversations. <laughs> I saw you shaking your head, Robert. You agree? Yeah, that's facts. Uh, I would go there a couple of times and like pull out my laptop and it would just be sitting there in front of me. He would just chat. Like, never touch it. Never touch it. I feel that. I feel that. All right, I got one more spot. One more spot. Brandon, does this look familiar to you? Yeah, no, I know about Perkins, definitely. Yeah, Perkins. I never like it. This is the view. I don't know. I don't know if I recognize this where this angle's from, but no, I definitely know about Perkins. Uh so like really nice. It's not not as nice as Steve Moss. It's more like where you got to go to get your, you know, late night work done. You know, Steve Moss is for the daytime. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Got you, got you, got you. Um, let me ask you, Danielle, really quick as we talk about the study spots. Like, you have been how long have you been at Villanova? Uh, for two years. I'm graduating in May. You graduated in May. Yep. Okay, cool. So, were you able to get? a pretty solid like on campus experience before things shut down yeah um i was on campus probably for like a year yeah like a little less than a year before everything shut down got you got you was it um how did it compare in terms of the um, study the academic life well first studying i found a study spot there in the library as well um i'm the one who said we should put uh perkins in there because i basically lived in perkins um, Perkins is a 24 hour library. So like, I know a lot of schools, the library shut down after a certain time, but at Duke they're open all day. Um, so at Villanova, I found like a good study spot. Um, and yeah, I mean, like I would say the classes are more manageable just because instead of having four classes, I only have two classes, um, as a graduate student. So it's still hard work, but it's like less volume. Spread out, right? I got right. you, I got you. Awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. And it's something, it's more specific in your area too, right? Right, exactly. Like, got gotcha. you. Yeah, I don't have to worry about taking electrical engineering and I'm just sitting in class, like I'm never gonna use this. Like all the classes that I use are pretty applicable to what I'm gonna be doing when I get a job. Got you, got you. All right, so I got some memes here too, as it relates to your experience at Duke. And as soon as you see it, I need y'all to tell me, just go ahead and say true, say facts. If you see, if you agree, just put facts and tell me why or why not. All right, y'all ready? Here we go. Tell me, just go ahead and say facts if you agree. Teacher, you will learn this in college. Professor, <laughs> you learned this in school. Me. All right, when was I actually supposed to learn this? Just kind of sitting there. Is that facts? A hundred percent. Um, I feel like with a lot of the intro STEM classes, the teachers would drop that line, like in physics, um, what else? In math classes, they'd be like, Oh yeah, you should have learned this in high school. And I'm just in here mm -hmm. like, I did not go to the same high school as half the kids in this room. So right. like what they learned was not the same as what I learned. Um, but yeah, that was me. That's still me, like, yeah. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um what about this right here, um, Robert? Late nights, facts. That that's that's facts for sure. Uh, <laughs> Three a.m. That's really not a late night, honestly. Um, wow, that's, that's average. That's how I'm looking at like five a.m. <laughs> but for sure, I've heard somebody say like again, like it's easier to like stay up to six a.m. than it is to wake up at six a.m. Yeah, I know those times where you're like, man, I would go to sleep right now, but I don't trust myself. Like, have you ever been there? So let me go ahead and just thug this thing out. Let me go as late as I need to go. All right, how about this one, uh, Jamie? Well, you got a 38% in the exam, but the average is 32. Hey. 
<laughs> no, this is this is a hundred percent facts, and all of the STEM classes, really, all of them. <laughs> I know, right? Yo, you just gotta do better. You just gotta get ahead of the curve. That's all. Like, who cares where it's at? If the average is thirty-two, I'm at thirty-eight. That thirty-eight looking pretty nice. I can say that for sure. <laughs> Honestly, that class is multi. I've never seen a class with that low test averages. Like the curve in that class is actually crazy. Oh man, I know what you mean. Though sometimes it's like I remember getting grades. I'm like, yo, like, is this out of a hundred or is this out of like, <laughs> is this out of thirty or like, what is this out of like, what are we doing here? Like, what is the total? What's the highest score possible? Brandon, how did, how does this uh, relate to your experience? Oh yeah, this is my entire college experience. <laughs> this is all every single year, every class. But it's how you, that's how you survive. That's how you get through. You know, you rely on others. But no, yeah, this is this is right now. I, I still haven't graduated yet. We got a couple more weeks of this. Right now, right as we yeah, speak. Man. Yep, I'm just enjoying it. It's fine. Wait, so we actually have a picnic at Duke, and each year we have the picnic. We get T-shirts. And one of the years, this was like on one of the t-shirts, the same exact. Oh, movie. for real? Oh, yeah. man. It's so true, then. It's definitely resonating. All right. And last one, Jordan, tell me, tell me if this, as you're about to graduate, how accurate is this one? It's so accurate. <laughs> I remember I'm taking actually like an intro neuro class right now. And I'll see the uh, freshmen on Zoom. And they're like perky faces and they're so engaged and ready to ask questions. I'm like, I'm just, I'm here to graduate. Just let me pass. I know that's right. I feel that. I feel that. Well, cool. I appreciate y'all playing along. Um, as we get towards the end of this chat, this has been fantastic. A lot of insight. I'm really interested if everybody can kind of give me, if you feel inclined to answer this question, don't feel obligated. But as you reflect, right, and think about the academics, the social life, your experience as a black student, um, really all that encompasses, you know, the matriculation at Duke. If you could change one thing about your beloved school, um, what would it be if you could? Anybody brave enough to speak on that? To lovingly okay. speak on that, of course. Okay. <laughs> um, so mine would be the relationship with Durham. Okay. Um, I feel like Duke, like a lot of other schools, like Johns Hopkins, like Yale, um, they just have these really messed up histories with the communities nearby. Um, and Duke has that same type of relationship with a lot of people in Durham. So I would fix that. That's definitely possible. Definitely possible. Any other thoughts? If you could like change one thing, whether it's the school or your experience in particular or whatever. Yeah, um, I say. Um, go ahead, Franklin. Go, uh, no, go. <laughs> I said, yeah, I said from my experience, definitely, I wish I had a little more, I spent a little more time engaging in some extracurricular activities, you know. Um, I definitely gave a lot to, like, the athletic side, and I feel like I kind of pulled back a little bit more, gave a lot more to um, some different things I was in interested in, different hobbies and stuff. Got you. Go ahead, Jamie. Um, one thing I would change about Duke is, I guess, their value of, like, mental health, specifically okay. in the engineering department. Um, I know with virtual school, they like cut out all the breaks that we had, mm -hmm. like spring break, fall break, and they just kind of made us like gun it out for the straight 14 weeks, which is really brutal. And so I think Duke likes to advocate that and say they like value mental health and they want their students to have this balance and they want their students to have access to different mental health resources, but they never actually like give students the time to like reflect and take a break and like actually value their own mental health. It's always like, go, go, go. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that that came to the forefront over the last year for sure. You know, it has to be more than just something we say a buzzword. Um, you know, it's definitely got to be a real priority in action. So, no, thank you, thanks for sharing that. A anybody else, if you think about your matriculation as a Blue Devil in STEM, if you could change one thing. Yeah, this just kind of goes with what everyone has been saying. I wish Duke was a little bit more about what happens in actuality versus what the appearance may be. Mm -hmm. Like they have a world-class uh, wellness center and all these resources, but if you go there, they don't have enough people staffing it. They have to like go outside and find other resources just for the students who use it. And it's not like every student uses it. So it just, it doesn't have the resources. Um, mm. 
same thing for like diversity or being aware of you know what's going on with different races and how they handle situations like everything right. that happened with um, George Floyd. They a lot of times delay their reaction to that stuff. And it's mm-hmm. great to say like, oh, we see you, we care, we don't approve of the stuff that happened. But it's like, yeah. where were you when I needed you? So a lot of stuff like that where appearances are great, but what are you really doing? Got you, got you. Wish it was more pro- proactive, proactivity in that area. Um, I'm a flipping, I guess, give an opportunity if anybody wants to share. Is there anything that you're like, really proud of though that made you a moment or any particular thing that makes you say i'm glad i chose duke uh you know i'm glad that this became a part of my career part of my journey y'all got me going first all the time like <laughs> <laughs> you, you quick on it you quick on it Danielle. Go ahead. Go ahead. um so i'm really happy that i definitely took advantage of traveling at duke so i studied abroad in um sydney australia for a semester studied abroad in Ghana. I did a summer program in Peru. Um, I took a trip to Bolivia with a class. Like I was using all of Duke's money um, and they got me a lot of stamps on my passport. So I'm really happy that I went to Duke because I'm unsure if I went anywhere else, if I would have the chance to travel as much as I got the chance to at Duke. Got you. I love it. That's, that's what's great about that period, this period in life, you know, that just, Go for it. Take advantage of those opportunities. Yeah, I feel like one thing um, I'm definitely proud of, like, for my decision to come here is, like, the school spirit, for sure. Like, coming out of a math class and going to, like, a basketball game, like, is mm-hmm. actually like, really loud. Um, Like, the students here, like, love Duke and are, like, really, like, bold in it and, like, loud and crazy. Um, so, like, school spirit is definitely, like, top-notch at Duke. That's one thing. Yeah. Speaking of that, did any of y'all ever tent? Did any of y'all ever tent camp out? Danielle, you did. <laughs> Damn, you have it. And, and explain what it is real quick, Danielle. T- what is tenting? Is it- okay, so I did know. it two. I did it two times. Um, and basically, Duke. I know a lot of different schools. They give out tickets for their basketball games on like a lottery basis. Yeah. Um, at Duke, it's kind of like first come, first serve. Mm-hmm. Um, so. To go to the UNC game, that's like the most coveted game and like all of, all of college sports, really. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, you would have to sleep out in a tent anywhere from a week or some people did it like just the night or two before to a month before. Um, mm-hmm. My sophomore year, I did it. I was sleeping in a tent for a month and it was freezing oh cold my goodness. In a tent with 11 other people and it's not fun but it's definitely worth it when you get to go to a game and president obama is sitting there like hey <laughs> hey what up you behind them get pity. do you um did y'all ever make it to any of those games so y'all other people shaking their head they didn't do it did y'all ever make it to that game do unc basketball y'all just was like i i'll let daniel I enjoy it <laughs> I went to the uh, Cameron Crazy, which is like this huge like pep rally thing. And then I went to the Duke versus Southern game because, you know, Southern's from Baton Rouge. So I went to that. But I didn't have to tent for any of those. I just was like really against like sleeping in the tent. It was just not, it was just dirty. And I, I just couldn't, I just, uh, <laughs> you know. Can't get down. Can't get down, man. Um, since we just really quick before I go to the last question, Brent, I'm wondering if you got any other stories about like, any particular moments where, you know, again, back to that, being a student athlete, studying engineering, um, juggling it all, where it was just kind of like a tough time or a challenge that you had to overcome that you look back and be like, I'm never going to forget that that particular stretch. Yeah, no, I mean, honestly, that was really all of engineering, you know, kind of going through every year, you know, every semester was with some hard classes, uh, definitely some tough times. But like everybody said, you know, it's just finding the people, uh, the friends that you could lean on in those times, lean on, um, you know, for help studying, getting what you need to get done, done. Uh, that's what yeah. really helped pull through. So, yeah. The whole thing, right? You're not going to forget mm-hmm. the whole thing. Exactly. I got it. I got it. Well, here, here's, the, um, I guess, the final question. I'm going to start this with you, Jordan. Um, we like to end things with like parting words of wisdom. And I really want to hear everybody's perspective. But here's how I would like you to approach this question, right? Imagine that you have opportunity to talk to yourself 
I mean, like your last semester in high school before you got to Duke, right? And you had an opportunity to sit young Jordan down and say, look here, uh, I know a thing or two about what you're about to experience. And here are some words of wisdom that I have for you, because I think there are some people that could benefit from that. What will be your parting words of wisdom? We'll start with you and we'll go around. What would you say uh, to that individual? Um, I think definitely that you deserve to be there. You didn't just get into deep on a fluke. Your name will be on your dorm room, just like it should be, and on your class rosters if you don't have to be scared that someone made a mistake somewhere. And everyone around you is having a hard time too. It's not just you, you're not the only one struggling. You've got it. And look to those people for help. Word, word, cool. Let's go, uh, let's go to you, Jamie. Um, I would tell younger Jamie to definitely just like slow down and try to, I guess, enjoy each moment. Cause I think freshman and sophomore year, I really got hung up in either like being social, like really socializing, not really focusing on work. And then, or like really focusing on working, not really taking the time out to talk to other people. And so finding a balance wasn't something I found until my late, until like later in my junior year. So really kind of slowing down and taking everything one step at a time and not focusing too much on the future is definitely something I would tell myself. That's good. That's good. Um, yeah, Robert, let me, let me ask you, man, if you could give some parting words of wisdom, I think you're in a unique, unique spot because, you know, being right there in the middle, right. You, you're in the, you're in the thick of it. What would you say to that younger version of yourself? Um, I have some different, it's more like high school advice that'll help out in college. Okay. I don't know. I went to a school where it's like AP classes, like we had them, but people didn't really like try on AP tests. So like advice I would give is like actually like put a lot of effort into those APs. Cause like I was, I was in the mindset. I was like, oh, I'll just take the class in college. Like it's not that big of a deal, but like those college intro classes, you don't want to take, you want to skip as many of them as possible. Cause they're rough. Like, I feel like I was behind for like the average like Pratt student has like uh, their their calc credits like out of the way. So I'm starting at like the first calc and um, those are just classes you really don't want to be taking. They just uh, they they set you behind. You have less like free classes um, in the back end. Um, so that's like high school advice I would give. Like getting out of those intro classes makes a difference. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. If you can if you can skip, if you can get ahead of that. Definitely do what you got to do to get ahead of it, for sure, for sure. Brennan, let me hear you, man. What, what would you say to the younger version of yourself, man? You about to graduate, man. Like as you, as you reflect on, you know, what you've learned so far. What would you give as words of wisdom to to a younger person, the younger version of yourself? Yeah, I think I would tell my younger self definitely like be yourself, you know, through everything. Um, looking back at college, you know, I feel like we all have a lot of pressure from other people, um, our classmates. Uh, our professors and kind of kind of getting pushed in these different directions. So it's being yourself, doing what you want to do, um, going towards what you are uh, you're interested in. I think the best piece piece of advice I could I could give. For sure, for sure. And yeah. I, I can tell that that's from the heart too, man. Yeah. Um Jim, just as I as I read when I was introducing you, you know, you really want to find something that you enjoy. And mm -hmm. I see that as something that you you definitely live by. So thanks for sharing that. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Uh Danielle, Danielle the the master's student right now uh, what are your parting words of wisdom um mine are actually very similar to what jordan said just like you deserve to be there as much as everybody else uh freshman year was really rough for me i was actually considering like um transferring out of duke because i was just having a really hard time with school plus i just felt ostracized because i was black and i was low income um, so I just really didn't think that Duke was a school for me and they let me in, um, as some part of a, you know, oh, let's see what happens with that one girl from that school we've never heard of, <laughs> but I did my thing and I deserve to be there as much as everybody else does. So that's what I would tell myself. Absolutely. You absolutely deserve to be there. You deserve everything that you're pursuing right now and you will enter the workforce as a water resource engineer. I just love the fact that, you know, we continue to like, you know, we have an idea of where we're going, but we don't have it all figured out at any point, really. But as you grow, you develop, you begin to kind of get 
refine and you iterate that process. And I just think you're doing a great job um, honing in on what you want to do, even as a master's student at Villanova. Um, Brandon, Ari, again, I just said to you, bro, I definitely think you're living by a great set of values and principles, core values. You're looking for a place where you can truly enjoy life and really give your best. Who wants to work? For, you know, our work, our work lives are the majority of our lives. People don't really think about it. Like college is so small compared to like the career. Our even our childhood is so small. And so you definitely want to find something that you enjoy doing. So more power to you. Um, in that regard, Robert, man, you know, as a sophomore, you got so much more ahead of you. I think you're in a powerful field. You know that software, well development, man, the future is in your hands. And so I already know that you have great things in store for you. So keep giving your all. Just as you gave advice advice to the high school versions of yourself, i just going to go ahead and tell you, man, as you continue to give everything you've got, because that craft, that skill that you're developing right now is going to serve you well. Um, Jordan, of course, making Raleigh proud out there in Durham. So shout out to you. Um, going to med school, that's incredible. I have some friends that I went to school with and I did engineering with that went on to med school. Did an incredible job, living incredible lives right now, really enjoying what they're doing. I think it's awesome that you um, are getting this engineering undergrad. I may be biased, but I always feel like it's it's one of the best undergraduate degrees a person can get, regardless of what you go into. And so I think you made a phenomenal choice, and you will continue to make great choices. And Jamie, you already know I, I've told you so many times, like, hey, you you can do it all. You have definitely ambitious thoughts. You're gonna go into you want to consider academia, go for it. You want to go into professional, be a professional engineer, PE, go for it. You want to go into grad school, go whatever you want to do. You absolutely have the ability. And that's the thing, like you all just by coming on here shows that you are people who um, have at least a measure of confidence in yourself and your own intellect and your ability to express that. So I just want to thank y'all from the bottom of my heart, uh, from me to you all, from one engineer to others that, um, you know, let's keep doing this thing and I'll see you all in the winter circle. So thank you all so much for taking the time to come on the show. Thank you for having us. Duke, once again, y'all give him a wave as we head on out and say peace out for another edition of Still Media Live. Y'all take care.